this is April. Welcome to Crafting in the Night. Today I wanted to show you my crochet spot. So when I crochet at night or during the day, really even, this is where I do it. Now on my left, typically I have my crochet whip cart and when I'm not crocheting, this actually fits right to the left of my whip bin here. And then on the right, I have a small coffee table, a round table that has my water, a trash can, and um, some other items on it. So I have a table surface here, and then I have some of my whips, not all of them. As you, if you're returning to this channel, you may know I love having whips, but um, this is just some of the ones I'm currently working on. So today what I wanted to do is reorganize this whip cart with some items I've got from the Dollar Tree. Let's get started. So just a closer view, this is my dog Hurley and he's a little upset because he just got cozy and then I got up. And this is the table and then normally when I'm not crocheting, instead of staying in the walkway here, this table moves right here and then this cart rolls out of the way to this spot right here. So Hurley's going to make himself comfortable. So I bought some stuff from the Dollar Tree and what I wanted to do is organize this cart. The first thing I'm going to do is empty that out. I'm just going to set everything to the side and then I'll be back and show you how we organize it with the items that I purchased. So one of the first things I got from the Dollar Tree and I've already put on are these hooks. They were two of four package and they're super strong magnets so I'm going to go ahead and put these two on as well. And I'll show you what I do with those when we get further along in the video. So for organizing bins I wasn't quite sure. I did take measurements of the internal width and the length of this. This cart I got from Michael's and I think I probably used one of their 40% off coupons when I did it, um, but the carts go on sale all the time and if it's not on sale, then you can use a coupon for it. So that um, is one way to get it at a discount. So let's go over some of the items that I have. The first one was this pencil holder. And while I'm not a fan of the black and white plaid background, what I did like is that it has multiple slots where I think I could put um, crochet hooks. So I'm gonna pop that right up here. And typically I have this facing towards me, so I'll have it positioned like this. So as you see me arrange items in the cart, I'll keep that in mind. And actually I'll probably put that at the back. Okay, so we've got a couple of different things here. I saw this really cute um, kind of mummy um, box and I thought this would be cute for um, scraps or uh, tr uh, like a little trash can. So we'll hang that guy up. And then I got this bin and my idea for this bin is actually to attach it to the side. Now, when I attach it, I do wanna be cognizant of only attaching things on one side because when I have my cart this way, I wanna be able to kind of really have it all the way back without things bumping up against it. So I'll attach things only to the one side. So for attaching, I got these cable ties as well. So let's get that attached. Okay, so actually I think I'm going to attach this kind of down here because I have another basket that I want to put up here. So I'm just going to go through the mesh here, loop around and come back through with the zip tie. And then thread it through. There we go, and then I'll do the same thing to the other side. Loop it around, come back through. All right, we got it. So I've attached this basket with zip ties and I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and snug and then trim off this excess. On both sides. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. So that is the basket and that is snug. It's not going anywhere. So that will be nice. Also got a clear ruler and I got that just because sometimes both when I'm sketching out patterns or when I'm um, reading like a graph gam, I need that. So let's have a look and see. This bin, let me bring you here. So I got two of these, these were a two pack. And what I thought that we could do for this one is kind of attach it right here, just to be like a tray. And this could also, depending on how much weight it will hold, it could be for crochet hooks or anything else. So let me get this open. And then same as with the basket below, we're going to attach it. So I'm going to get this started. There we go. And it is a little bit flimsy, so I don't think we could put anything heavy in it, um, unlike this one, which absolutely could hold something heavier. This is not going to be good for um, probably crochet hooks, although I bet it could fit some. But here's some hooks and pens. You see how it kind of angling downwards, so I don't know if that I don't know if that's actually going to work maybe not you know what I should have done I should have gotten two of these baskets these little wire baskets I'm going to go ahead and take this off this is trial and error and then uh, I'll be right back Okay, that didn't work out, but that's okay. It's trial and error. The next thing I got are these two baskets. And I did actually, one of the things that came in handy was, even if you don't need a ruler, I went and grabbed a ruler from the uh, office supply section so that I could measure the size of the boxes because at the Dollar Tree, at least the one I went to, hardly any of the boxes had the measurements on them. So I thought that came in handy. Um, so these two baskets, what I thought I'd do is just set them in here and have them be to organize squares. So um, right now I'm working on at least two, two different granny square projects, plus I have various other motif projects. And what I like to do is sort them into sections of ones that already have their ends weaved in and ones that don't. So by having the two bins, I could just keep the left one for ones that don't have their ends weaved in and the right one for ones that do. And I think that's going to work out perfectly for me. Another thing that I'm working on right now is designing a gorgeous Halloween themed graph gown. And so what I wanted to do was get some of these clips. Now, I don't remember whose video I saw these in, but when I find it, I will be sure to link it in the description. But these are just clothespin clips. Um, and I got them kind of near where the storage stuff was at the Dollar Tree and they come in a pack of six and so for right now because I still have to add them to the blanket I'm just going to get them opened up and on the cart so that they're there and ready for me and they have um, a little cardboard in the middle and so I think what I'm going to do is just clip these on the side here Again, I'm working on a project right now, so I'll be able to use them. This is actually kind of cool. They kind of stick up, um, so they're not sliding down, which it wouldn't matter if they were. And I could also have dumped them in the basket, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use that basket for. In fact, I'm going to move this ruler uh, because I think that could go here. I don't use it very often, and I'm actually going to put this guy here. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So this will be my uh, trash container. It's just a little bit more accessible. Again, I do have one here that I use for trash, but I think I can kind of store this one underneath now and use this and see how that works out for me as far as just putting my little scraps. And because it's got the little ribbon, I can take it off, dump it out, and then put it back. Um, so 
I think the only thing different is once Halloween is over, seeing if they have other themed ones that would be cute to kind of keep a theme going year round or else I could just use some Mod Podge and some scrapbook paper and make this nice and pretty um, or even paint it and then use some stickers. So that's my idea for that. If you've watched the podcast, you may have seen the episode where I showed you my stitch marker trick and that's where I take various colored stitch markers. So in this case, I have let's see, five blue ones, and then I have one green one. So I know no matter what, when I pick up this project, that this uses a five and a half millimeter hook. So my method to that is however many solid ones is the even number for the hook size. So six of the same solid color is a six millimeter. And then if I do use a half millimeter, like I, I use a five and a half a lot, or even a four and a half, so for four and a half, I would do four of the same color and then one of a different color. And that always includes whatever's attaching it. Um, and that's so that when I store a project, I can pick it up and know what hook markers, um, what size hook it is based on the hook marker. So I thought, you know, one of the things is that I have this giant set of stitch markers and I want to organize those better so that when I do mark my whips. I can just pull from the same color instead of having to dig around. So what I got was this pill box. So I'm hoping that this will be a good way for me to just kind of break up the colors a little bit. When I'm using a traditional stitch marker, I don't care what color it is, but for the hook determination, I do use my system. So I think this will be a good way to organize it. So let me show you what this looks like. Here they are all organized. Now there actually were additional colors, but since I didn't have enough room, I'm just going to leave those for regular stitch markers. As well, there were different shades of the same color. So I don't know if you can see if I add those in, that's purple, but it's a different color purple. You can kind of see it there. So I wouldn't include those in the purple section because I just know how my brain works. And when I went to go try to figure out what size hook that was, I'd be wrestling with myself. Well, is it the same color? Is it not the same color? So is it a four and a half or is it a five? Um, so for me, at least the way my brain, um, I just have all the same shade in the same slot as far as doing my little stitch marker trick. Now, the other thing that I want to note that if you do use this stitch marker trick to use these locking stitch markers that have the um, section there on the back where you can where you can lock them. I don't know if it'll focus, but use that instead of these ones, which I also found in my stitch marker bin that don't lock. And that's just because if one does slide out or slide off when you're doing this, then you're going to potentially go up or down a hook size, which could affect your project. So I'll get this closed up. And then this can sit right in here. Okay, let's go to the next thing. So the last item that I got are these bins and I thought that these could work up here. Yep, I was a little worried if they were gonna fit, but they do. And these could hold, oh, you know what? They're not gonna fit because of this guy. There we go. Let's see. Oh, I have a book in there. Should have emptied it completely out. Okay. Now, in my perfect world, I would have gotten all um, white organizers. They didn't have them. So I thought this blue would go okay. And actually, I'm wondering if these, these won't stack. So they fit in there, but you can see they're they're not 100% secure. They're a little bit wobbly, and that's just because they're rich. The ribbing here is, and the way that the bottom curves isn't letting it sit all the way down. So um, I think it'll be fine. So we'll do that. Let's see. We'll put the stitch markers here. And then, now let's turn this sideways instead. 
put the stitch markers down there, put this up here, and I think that'll be fine. Okay, so the hook holder. Oh, no, more stuff in there. That's why. Okay, let's see if that's going to work okay now. Yes, okay. We got it. So the bins are in there. They're actually pretty good. And then the stitch markers are down here. And then I'm just going to set this on. Mm, I don't like it there. I think this is a good idea, but I don't know if it's going to work in actuality. So um, that is what it is. But let's take the next step and restock this with some of my whips. As I mentioned, this section is going to be for uh, granny squares that don't have their ends weaved in. So I'll get those organized here and the ones that do will go on the right. So I can just kind of quickly sort through what still needs to be done. This is great because I can pick up two or three at a time and work on them and then um, I can also visually see when the pile is getting lower or not. So since I have more than one granny square project going on at a time, I think what I'm going to do is just only have one at a time in these baskets. So this is the probably the next one I need to get done. So I'll just have this project in here. And then when this is done, then I'll go ahead and switch over to my other project. So I'll keep getting this stocked up. Now where these were being stored is in this plastic bin. That worked fine too, but it wound up having the neutral yarn, which is right here, um, stacked on top of it. So because the joining yarn was stacked on top, I wasn't really doing anything with the squares themselves. So I think having these handy in my whip cart is going to be a game changer. And I'll still store these balls of yarn inside the tote until it's um, all the squares are done and it's time to join them. All right, so all the granny squares are organized in here. Let's organize the bottom shelf, which is super easy. I'm going to hold you by hand for this one, but it's really easy because what I have are various whips stored in these lovely um kind of they're plastic bags but they're so super durable i will put uh, an affiliate link in fact all of the links in my description box are you should assume that they're affiliate links but i'll put a link to these specific ones i get them off of amazon and i really like them for keeping um various whips organized and you know, I have a dog and he sheds and so on, he's really little. So on the ground level, if he shakes or something and he does lose a little bit of fur, this keeps the projects nice and clean. Um, so they don't get like little dog hairs in them or whatever, you know, it's inevitable when you have pets, but I do at least try to keep some things, uh, you know, try to keep things clean. So, um, everything that I put down low, I either put in bins, I still got to clean that up, but I put in bins or I put in bags, um, just so that he isn't shedding all over them. So we've got this section, we've got this section. So now it's time to do the top. So as I survey the mess that is getting organized, I have a couple of decisions to make about organizing the top. So what I did have here before was, uh, the various yarn, um, for one of my blankets and now I have two bins. So I could do what I did with the grannies and put my other granny square project up here, which is my stitch quest project, which I am actively working on, or I could put a whip up here, a different whip. They're all whips, but I, you know, you know what I mean, a different one. Um, and I think if I find a little narrow, like, pencil box and I didn't get one but I saw them there that would fit perfectly right here on top of this because again I don't use these very often because um I I don't start whips every day I, I know it seems that way but I don't um <laughs> to put in a box here for my crochet hooks um so let me figure out what I'm gonna do here and then I will show you the result all right let's do the final tour now I will say that this cleaning project ended or 
kind of isn't completely done yet, but kind of ended the way most of my cleaning projects do. I did vacuum the floor before I did this, so the floor is nice and clean, but as with any time that I <laughs> clean and organize, I have more to put away than I did to begin with, but I do think this whip cart is going to work out. So let's have a look. We have up at the top is my Stitch Quest project, which is... Um, one of my very active projects. So I've got a bunch made for it. This is, there's two square types on this. There's this pink square and there's a navy square. So what I did was just put the pinks in one side and the navy in the other side. And then I am using my, I think it's called a yarn genie. So I have extra spools so that I can just switch between projects. So this spool, I just popped in there so I can switch easily. And then what I did do is I only have one finished square, but it's very clearly not a part of this project. So um, it's a different type of yarn. This is Heartland yarn, and this is uh, not. And so this one is completely weaved in. So at least for a little bit, I can just throw the finished ones in here and just it'll be easy to tell them apart. Again, I have my hooks. Oh, and what I wanted to show you is one of the things I use these hooks for, or you can use these hooks for, is if you do have these projects bags of whatever size, this is actually a pretty heavy project. It's got a skein of um, mandala yarn in there, plus some motifs finished, but you can just hang those on there and they will just hang. Um, and you can hang other things on there too. Like I normally have scissors um, that um, I don't normally keep my scissors here but you could definitely keep your scissors there or whatever um, again I'm not working on this right now so I'm going to put this below and then I have this for whatever I want to use it for I haven't figured that out it's probably going to be little scraps of yarn like I know as I'm working on my corner to corner blanket um, the graph gan. Sometimes I have little balls of yarn that I used for bobbins that um, I had to cut off because I was done with that color so I can put them in here to reuse them um, or what have you. I have my hooks for that uh, corner to corner graph gan and then I have this is what I'm going to use for trash. So um, again I'm actually going to put this hook up here. This will slide nicely this is where I keep it when I'm working and then um, I move it out of the way when I'm not when I go to bed at night so I still have another cleaning video to film I need to kind of reorganize my whips um, I need to film a whip video but you know it is what it is this is where we get started and then um, this cart is pretty much cleaned off now, so I'll put my yarn genie, which you can see right there. Um. So then as far as my other work table goes, I typically have my wool genie here um, attached to whatever it's working on. So I'm sitting, I am sit where the dog is sitting now, and I'll work on that um, and just make sure that this can feed. I have a clamp on a cup holder that holds my water and what I love about this is that it has a hook or an area where you can stick your scissors so I normally have them over here and then from Walmart I picked up this um, pioneer woman bowl and it stores uh, tape measures a nail file uh, needles to weave in ends uh, cake clip. I use this to clip cakes so that they don't unravel. Uh, another tape measure and stitch markers. A few stitch markers in here as well. So that's what I normally have on this table. Um, and it's because these are things that I don't typically have to reach for and I can just crochet. I have my remote handy. If I need to set a plate, I can set it down here. Um, and then underneath I have a big sully some notepads and um, a bigger trash can um, that just comes in handy to have um, you know trash or whatever else in it. So those are my two main areas as far as what I work off of when I'm actively crocheting. As you can tell I normally crochet at night. I also normally film at night and that's why I am in my jammies. Until next time keep calm and crochet on. Ooh.